Hey everyone, welcome back to another Recall by Data IQ video. My name is Tina and I'm a data scientist that works in tech. In this video, I'm going to share with you guys five beginner friendly and unique data science projects with resources and source code. So without further ado, let's go. The first two projects are going to be heavy on analytics and data visualization, which is a core part of a data scientist's job. Third project is going to be a stock trading bot, which heavily uses APIs, another really important skill set. The last two projects are going to heavily delve into machine learning. First project is personal finance and budgeting. Do you have issues with budgeting and personal finance and impulse spending? Do you spend a hideous amount of money on random things and food and Ubers? Well, it is time to now confront your fears. What I love about data science projects is that you can always start with a very basic version and actually build that up. So the skills that you'll be practicing is starting off in Excel and then moving on to Python and doing more visualization based stuff. And this is how I would do it how I have already done it as well. So you can go to your bank and download your personal statement. Usually you can download this very easily as a CSV file. You can then just open up in Excel and look at all the money flowing in and out. By the way, you can also do it within Data IQ for quicker analysis. Some pretty interesting things that you can start answering is figuring out what your biggest expenses are. You can do this by ordering the column of your expenses. You can also look at different categories and start making some plots. Perhaps you can look at a graph of your monthly spending over time. You can also go to Data IQ to have a wider range of options when it comes to visualizing your money behaviors. Now to iterate on this project and start exploring things that are a little bit more advanced, you can then port it over to Python or in a Jupyter Notebook, which is open source and also available in Data IQ. And I highly recommend that you kind of replicate some of these just to make sure and sanity check yourself to make sure that the numbers match up. And then after that, something really cool that you can do is actually do a simple forecasting. What you can start off in your forecasting is to use a simple linear regression. If you want a little bit more details about linear regression, you can check out this video linked over here. By doing this, you can extrapolate your spending from the past few months and see how much you're going to be spending name probably next month and the month after that and perhaps freak out a little bit if you're if it goes like this <laughs> some other things that i encourage you to start looking into is doing some more visualizations what's really cool about python is that you can easily import modules like plotly or seaborn and then make these very beautiful visualizations and if you want to take it even a step further I would recommend building a dashboard. And to do this, I would recommend checking out Streamlit. Note that you can also do that within Data IQ thanks to its visualization features. If this is a project that sounds interesting to you, do check out the resources linked below in the descriptions to get you started. Second data science project that I have for you is an exploratory NFT analysis. So first of all, what is an NFT? NFT stands for non-fungible token, and it can contain anything digitally, including art, music, GIFs, as well as components of video games. Non-fungible means that each item is considered unique and individual, and it's not interchangeable. So in case you're not aware, NFTs are completely popping off these days, and there's a lot of money going into it. For example, the most expensive NFT ever sold is called Every day is the first 5,000 days, which sold for $69.3 million. And the second one is CryptoPunk number 7523, which sold for $11.75 million. And here's an article of Elon Musk reposting a 28-year-old's meme, which then sold as an NFT for $20,000. That's pretty insane. In this project, the skills that you will practice is SQL, which is the absolute bread and butter of a data scientist, more Python and visualizations as well. So here's how I would do it. I would first download from Kaggle this SQLite database containing NFT data. I'll link in the descriptions the Kaggle data set. If you want, by the way, you can port this directly into Python, but I would actually highly recommend that you practice your SQL so you can download SQLite and then put this data set in. So from there, you can start doing some exploratory data analysis. You can answer some questions like who owns the majority of these NFTs? What's the distribution of NFTs by prices? What's the trend of NFT creation or what they call minting, as well as the transfers of NFTs over time? Hint, it's going to be going up. Then I would head on over to Python and try out some different models to see what are the factors that contribute the most to an NFT's price, which I don't think I have to explain is a super valuable exercise if you're actually looking to buy an NFT, not financial advice. I'll link your 
resource that goes into a lot of detail about feature importance and how to implement that. So definitely check that out if you're interested. And if you want to challenge yourself a little bit more and dive a little deeper, I would also recommend looking at maybe clustering of NFTs and even building a predictor. If you stay until the end of this video, I'll show you guys some really great resources from DataIQ that gives a great overview of these concepts. Next up is building a trading bot. Trading bots are super cool and super versatile. You can pretty much do them for anything, including stocks, including crypto, currencies, whatever you like. Generally, people build trading bots in order to test out their own algorithmic trading strategies or semi-automated trading. This project is going to be done in Python, and you also get to practice reading documentation and using APIs, object-oriented programming, and statistics and testing, which can vary from very simple to very complex depending on the nature of the algorithm you want to use. In the source code, I would link some example ones that I did. You can also get way, way more complex as well. And also you can do back testing as well as forward testing, which if you're not super familiar with, don't worry, I will link the resources below as well. So the way that I did this is that I used the TD Ameritrade API. I pulled the data from the API and built classes for the bot and implemented the algorithm. This is the part where you can get super creative and implement a lot of different algorithms. In my case, I implemented some very simple strategies, which is the X exponential moving average crossovers as well as RSI. Something else that could be really cool to do is looking at correlations between stocks, which is really useful if you're looking into diversifying your portfolio. Here's a good resource for explaining correlations and why they're important. Now for testing, you can first do back testing, which is when you test your algorithm for all your past data. And then you can also consider doing forward testing, in which case I used NinjaTrader platform to do. After you do this, congrats, you just implemented a full algorithmic trading bot. You can also apply it to a lot of different markets from Forex to stocks to cryptocurrencies. So I've already talked about some ways of elevating your project, which included some machine learning. But in the next two projects, these projects are going to be primarily focused on machine learning. The first of these projects is a League of Legends predictor. Credit to this project goes to this link, and which I will also link in the description. I just wanted to make a note here that yes, this project has been done before, but I think it's a common misconception for people to think that they have to build a completely new project from scratch. That's really not necessary. And it's also not how data scientists actually work in real life either. I actually think if you're new to data science and to machine learning, it's actually really great to have a guide like this so that it helps you think about how to approach these sorts of questions. And then you can actually add on to that and really make that project your own. And I'll explain how. So full disclosure, I'm not much of a gamer. I played League of Legends probably twice in my life and I stopped because people were mean to me. However, I do know a lot of people who are very, very interested in League of Legends. And I know that it is quite strategic, which it is pretty interesting from a data science perspective. But first, this base project is looking at the variables that contribute the most to winning in League of Legends. What you practice is Python, some data cleaning, exploratory data analysis, feature engineering, building classifier models, as well as hyperparameter tuning. So you always start off with some data cleaning and some exploratory data analysis just to familiarize yourself with the data set. Data IQ can automatically suggest the best statistical analysis tailored for your data. Then moving on to multicollinearity. Oh my gosh, I can never pronounce this. Multicollinearity, which basically means that you want to remove variables that are highly correlated to each other. And then after that, you can start building your different classifier models. Seeing your precision, your recall, your F1 score, which is how we generally see how good machine learning models are, and then doing some hyperparameter tuning. After you get this base project to word, I highly recommend exploring not just single variables like this person did, and actually looking at combinations of variables. And Remember how I said that this is a really nice versatile project because you can then use the same approach and actually apply that to different games like for example Dota or whatever other game that is kind of similar in nature to League of Legends and try that out. Next project is for the weebs out there, such as myself, an anime recommender system. Again, base project credit goes to this person over here and linked in description. Did you watch sad anime such as Your Lie in April and Cried So Many Tears and want to continue crying and finding anime that is also similar to that? Or you have an obsession with Naruto like myself and you want to find other shonen anime like that? Hint, Black Clover is pretty similar. Well, this is a great introductory ML project to build a simple anime recommender system, skills that you will use and learn. Again, we're doing this in Python. You're going to do your usual pre-processing, your exploratory data analysis. By the way, Data IQ also has a plugin that 
can help you get started for recommender systems, which is scalable because it works for both Python and SQL. What this project focuses on is the idea of similarity measurement, specifically looking first at cosine similarity. So after you do your data cleaning, pre-processing, and some exploratory data analysis, you're going to implement cosine similarity, which is defining the similarity of two different vectors. In this case, vectors of ratings for each anime. This may sound super fancy, but what it really is, is just taking an anime and baking that into a vector of ratings by people who watched and rated this anime. And then you compare that vector to other vectors of animes with the same ratings by different people. And then you just do comparisons to see which animes are most similar to other animes, depending on the taste of the people who are viewing them. So to take this project a little bit further, you should also look at segmenting by different genres of anime. You can also try doing cosine similarity with another variable. And similar to League of Legends project, another reason why I chose this project for this video is because it's extremely versatile as well. You're applying this in this case through ratings for anime, but you can see how you can easily use the same approach in order to do anything with ratings for that matter, like Amazon products or movie ratings, or rate my professor. You can also continue to build upon this technique of cosine similarity, which is very commonly used in fraud detection and identifying similar documents, for example. You can check out this article linked in the descriptions for some really cool applications of cosine similarity. Okay, okay. So I said a five project, but I'm actually going to add in a bonus one, and that is a YouTube comments sentiment analysis. I did this project first because I was curious about the different comments that I was getting on my YouTube channel, and then I also applied this to other popular YouTube channels and videos. This is a pretty cool introduction to NLP and the world of sentiment analysis. The skills that you will practice here, this project is going to be done in Python. You'll learn to use the YouTube API to extract data and different modules for sentiment analysis. Note that DataIQ also offers a plugin for this. And this is what I did. I first went on the YouTube API and then I got the data for some YouTube channels and some YouTube videos that I was interested in. And then you go ahead and do your data cleaning and pre-processing as well as some exploratory data analysis. Some good things to look at are the most popular videos of a channel, what are the number of likes, what's the distribution of comments, things like that. Then I used two sentiment analysis modules in Python called Vader and TextBlob. And then it's the fun part. You can start ranking the different comments based upon sentiments. And you'll be surprised to see some pretty interesting things out there. I'm sure as you do this project, you'll also notice that for some comments, the sentiment isn't exactly correct. And that's usually due to the language that's being used, especially if there's irony that's involved, the model isn't super good at catching it. So something that I try doing is actually grouping together phrases. And if you want to go to the next level, highly recommend that you also think about some ways that you can kind of capture the meaning behind behind groups of words. Some other things that you can do. You can look into clustering of different comments. Um, a really popular algorithm that people use is k-means clustering. The Daiku also has a really cool sentiment analysis example project, which you should definitely check out linked in the description. Like the other projects, source code also linked in the description. By the way, if you want to learn more about NLP, where DS, where ML algorithms that I was talking about earlier, like prediction models, your classifiers, your regression models, and clustering, and so much more, do check out the free the Daiku learning resource that covers all of these topics and many, many more as well in data science and machine learning. And if you're looking for more example projects in data science and machine learning, including ones that are a little bit more advanced in deep learning as well as computer vision, you can check out the other example projects also on the Didaiku platform. Thanks for watching this video. I hope there is a project in here that you thought was really exciting. And do let us know in the comments below which of these projects you think was the most interesting and which ones you think you're going to try doing. See you guys in the next video.